Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Randomized Gaming. Yes, we're back here for another video and as always I'm your host for this video, Random Gamer Riven. Now, this is Now Playing Volume 4, so I thought I'd dig back up the Now Playing series as I think it's a good opportunity for us to talk about games we're currently playing and just to actually have a chat about games we're actually doing videos of. So you may have seen our previous video upload on the weekend was a long play of the Sega Saturn Patrick Hero S World League Mode or World League Mode as it's spelt as they spelt it in game <laughs> on the actual Saturn. Yes, the Japanese often tended to make typos when trying to spell English. Now, Hattrick Heroes S is actually a solid arcade title. It's part of the Hattrick Hero series, although the Hattrick Hero series got various names in the West. This was called Taito Power Goal for this, in this installment, but the original um, Hattrick Hero was called something like Football Champ, and one of the early arcade ones was probably better, best remembered as Italian 90, the arcade game. There were an awful lot of renamed the Hattrick Hero series, so it kind of lost credibility, sadly. But basically, Taito did a football series. There are about five or six games in it. And Hattrick Hero S is actually the last one. This was technically a port of Hattrick Hero 95 with a few changes and some additional content. Largely, it's a superior version, it has to be said, than the original arcade game, which just had an arcade mode as this version adds in league mode, exhibition matches, and of course a penalty kick trial mode as well, where you and another team face off in a penalty shootout. Now it's fair to say I'm not the biggest sports fan when it comes to video games. I don't think anyone in the randomised gaming team is. Largely, although I'm not a big sports fan in general, but my attitude with sports is why would you play football on a games console when you can go out and play it in a park, etc. or other sports as well. There's, for me, sports are more about physical activity rather than playing uh, video games. So it always seemed weird and I've never been a huge fan of them, but there are a few games here and now that are actually I always quite enjoyed. I do prefer arcade style sports games. I don't like realism. If I wanted to get a realistic sport, go out and do some running etc. Whereas you have an arcade style, you can add in some slight fun and elements that you don't normally get. And Hatchet Hero S is very much that type of arcade game, seeing as the game is Foul City with some of the moves you can do from punches, flying knee kicks, slide tackles and a few other moves that wouldn't technically be legal because you can slide tackle from behind in this. This is definitely not based on the modern era rule set. And even when it was released in the 90s, there's some questions over how League or some of the uh, moves in the game. There aren't many games that you, so put it this way, you can't elbow barge or punch someone in the game of football and get away with it. Well, that's it. I'm reminded of Luis Suarez's his infamous um, bite during the World Cup. And the fly kick may well indeed be inspired by Eric Cantona's infamous kick back in the 90s. So I'm just going to play a little ma couple of matches in the background. First match we're just going to play is just one from the World League mode. I'll just show you the footage that I recorded. We, if you want to see a full long play, we've done a full long play. That's got no commentary. I must admit, I've actually really enjoyed it. Now, I'm not, I said, I'm not a huge fan. It is a very fast-paced game, and I do like it. I did turn down the uh, match time slightly because in the initial, in the long play video we did, because three minutes either side seemed to take quite a long time so I cut down to one and a half. You can do up to 15 minutes which makes for incredibly long matches and the problem with video games is you generally find they never quite get the pace of the field right in how it's designed in terms of length because basically when you're charging up down a football field in real life you'll notice it takes quite a longer to get from one end to the other and ultimately a lot of games you seem to be able to get 50, create scores of like 50 nil if you have really long sessions, which of course you wouldn't really be able to do in a genuine football match. There's always been an issue with video games down sort of sports like football where they never quite get the realism quite right when they do go for the realistic side. But this is an arcade side. This does have super moves as you will see me perform in the long play. Um, some people may or may not like them. Basically, one of the super moves, if you have enough units saved up, is an instant goal, which some people may hate. I quite like it, as it means you have a get-out-of-jail-free card in the event of an emergency if you've got enough units. I think when I did the, the actual World League playthrough, I had enough units to do two, 
but there is technically a cheat that I'll show you later in the video that does allow you to give yourself 99 units but I think you normally get about you get four or five when you start and you in increase by one or two per match so the world league mode was a bit weird because it's just mainly a world cup mode but it is quite good fun I'm surprised what a good game this is um as I said it's it's quite a fast paced sports game lots of ball passing some great as I said some slightly comedic moments it plays really well it controls really well and Taito really did have that with their arcade games they really had refined games and it does play as basically it built on the engines of the previous Hatchet Heroes games and I always really quite enjoyed the franchise as a whole largely it was known as Football Champ but there was a version of this game called Italian 90 there's also a Mega Drive game called Italian 90 which is actually a different game because I remember this game from the 1990s yes that's me going back a few years and I can remember when they had it at the time sort of this football game so oh yes it's a World Cup and they, they did a version of it based around the World Cup certainly in Europe and I believe probably in the U maybe not in the USA because it's fair to say soccer as it's known in the US is not as popular as football is in Europe it's basically many people regard football as a religion almost whereas soccer is not as popular in the States but Hatchet Hero is certainly a very polished and enjoyable game. It is a lot of fun. And I do like the cheeky moments like being able to knock out the camera crews that are videoing the um, match. Or being able to hit the referee as well and watch him fall over. Of course if you did that in a real match you'd be in for a spot of bother. But um, there is that cheeky. There's, this has that unrealistic side which is what I always like about arcade games. You can have a bit of fun. You can poke a little fun at things in this. Something you wouldn't do in realistic games now it is very fast paced i i do enjoy this it's surprised me a lot because i wasn't sure how much i was going to enjoy it yes sega worldwide soccer 98 and 97 are the more serious realistic games if you prefer serious realistic football but personally i'm, I said, I'm not a huge sport fan and i much prefer the arcade type of game so this was actually quite an impressive game i mean it was a really early saturn game it was released in 1995 I think based on some of the review averages scores I saw at the time, the game did not review that well, which was a shame. But I can kind of understand the ethos as to why it didn't review that well, because the game doesn't have a save function. So basically you have the arcade mode, which is just a standard like six rounds or seven rounds, and then you win the World Cup. And then you have this World League mode, which is a group stage, then a knockout stage, which is basically a slightly better version of the arcade mode. Um, exhibition... It's mainly for you and a friend or just to practice and of course the penalty kick again that's really just you to practice what this doesn't have is a full-on league mode which is what it really needed and if it had that they would have had to have implemented a save feature which is also what this game needs because there's no sort of progressive thing so you can't play you know create a league and get from the start from like the crappy division and work your way up to the top division there isn't that in this and i think for many people if you're expecting a, a sort of in-depth football game with lots of modes this is not the football game for you if you want a football game that's fast fun for 15 20 minutes or you can just back play a load of matches then this is the type of game you want with as long as you're not a realistic if you want realism this is not the football game for you but it's actually really good fun it's nice to see this type of game in action so i'm actually going to show you a few cheats now from an exhibition match that we did So these are a couple of cheats I found on the Japanese websites. One allows you to give you 99 units if you want to be able to perform multiple power goals. Although admittedly when I did two power goals using this cheat I actually managed to crash the game at one point. Whether that was a modded Saturn issue or whether there was a bug because I was using the max team. And I'm also going to show you how to play as the max team which are the final team in the arcade mode. They're not in the world league mode. They're basically like an all star team. And they're only in the World League. Now it's fair to say this game does not use real player names. But in arcade mode as you progress you can unlock abilities. And you can also like customise your team in arcade mode. So you can like change your name and emblem and things like that. And there you can at the very end change the ace player's name. The first team I'm actually going to show you is 
the 99 units one and what you do is basically both the cheats are actually very much the same uh, on the ace player screen so this is the ace player screen you hold down l and r and then well you keep l and r that's the top the buffer buttons uh, you keep them held down and then you select an ace player so i'm going to select the one with long hair and that will give you 99 units now the max team cheat again it's pretty much the same hold down l and r and press press any button to select the team so you can only only one team can play as the max team and i did that for the first team here i held down l and r pressed a and then the team you select once you get to this screen as you can see there will have turned into the super team the max team which has a bear red bear for their logo with a black flag and we're going to be playing japan in this match and this match also has a happening event basically there's a couple of like cameo events like get streakers or like animals running on the pitch and we're going to see one of them in this match first game so here we go i must admit one of the the first things you always do with this is actually zoom out and that's the one issue i would say there's no um radar and it makes trying to pass to your players further ahead on the field a bit of a nightmare because you can't see where the players are and it is an absolute nightmare when like doing the corner kicks or doing uh, a goal kick because you can't see where they are and you've got to try you've got to try and take a, a bit of a guess the ai does move towards it but it can be a bit hit and miss at times and the problem is the cpu ai on the harder difficulties absolutely man marks you so you see there's a few colorful moves a couple of fly kicks there perfectly legal move in uh, the game of football a flying kick wouldn't at all get you a red card and you notice i'm striking at angles from this because that was the easiest method i found in the short term i've only played a, this probably giving about four or five hours and this is probably about the most effective method i found scoring basically scoring off the rebound is probably the easiest way to score the ai does if you make the ai keeper dive then um oh and here we go with a we've got head of throwing and this is a happening event so here we've got the drika girl run taking off her dress and then just running down the edge of the pinch it's quite an amusing little thing there's another one where a cat runs on and dashes across And it's a nice little side attraction. So yeah, I noticed with the controls you actually have to, if you tap it, you'll do a short pass. And if you hold it, you'll do a long pass. And pressing C also allows you to bring up the menu. So you have to just activate the hyper shot as well. And the hyper shot will activate when you pass to the, I think it's to pass to a player from the center line. I thought it was the ace you could pass, you had to pass to, but you can actually pass to certain any player in the centre, I think, yep, this will trigger it because I passed him to about the halfway line. And here goes with my super goal that will devastate their keeper. Hyper shot. It's also so powerful it knocks off the goalie's clothes as well. Goal. And I got a nice little goal celebration, which is quite amusing. The goal celebrations are actually random, so you're not guaranteed to get one. You also get a special mention if you get hat trick as well, and you can get triple hat tricks and double hat tricks as well. But you're going to need a long match to do that. So this is the max team said that the LR cheat works. Only one of you can play as the max team though, but it's good fun. But this is the final team in the league, and as you see there, all those teams are completely made up, I believe. When I checked, the England team does not use any real players from the time because you expect people like Paul Gascoigne and a few others to be in there, but they aren't. Yeah, the AI is a bit annoying. It does man mark you. It does feel like it's cheating at times on the hard difficulty, and I feel you have to exploit the AI's weaknesses. So one of them, they see there, if you run down the line, the AI will often slide tackle you and take the kick the ball out for a throw in and there's my patented method at work we basically get the keep kick the ball at him so the keeper dies the keeper will kick the ball basically reflect the ball back and then you have another player follow up and put the ball into the back of the net usually the rebound largely works on for a lot of goals it's actually very difficult to get a straight goal i have to admit the keeper ai is very tough to beat 
from certain areas. There is also a sweet spot angle which is near that point that if you get it in just at the right angle you can avoid the keeper and just hit the ball into the back of the net. I don't, don't think you can curve the ball that much as far as I played but you can basically it is possible to actually yeah so again same method it is possible to just literally kick past the keeper and get it into the guard you do it just right but it requires a sort of near perfect um, position kick off. the one annoying thing with this game is you don't get to select which player you control there's no button that whenever I t tried it it allowed you to change player basically the AI selects the best player for you and during heavy defensive moments where you have a lot of players in the box the AI can often rapidly swap between people and is not that good. The other thing is do not turn off the keeper AI because then you only get to control the keeper when the AI then picks the keeper if you have the AI turned off and often because of the auto selector being a bit wacky in the heat of the moment it will just pick the players not the keeper and you'll just watch as your keeper stands still while the CPU puts about seven past you. So yes, you also get lost time at the end. Oddly enough, they did. I think they call it, it is called extra time in Taito Power Goal, the English version. They did correct the English in the arcade release, but this Japanese port doesn't appear to use the corrected English release for the home one. So there, I've got a yellow card. You do get red cards. As far as I'm aware, you can't get a red card straight out. You always get a yellow first, then a red. And there's Japan getting in. The late consolation, not equalizer, late consolation goal. And yeah, it's a bit weird him doing his celebration when he this is a consolation goal and we're in lost time and they're about to lose. One tactic you can do is also run the timer down, which I've done a few times. And there we go. Yep, we won. Max team, goals three, fouls one, total goals, corner kick. Corner kicks are actually surprisingly rare in this. Um, I have had an own goal that I will had. Uh, one of these eight, uh, AI, I kicked the ball, did my usual tactic, and the, the ball just about landed near the goal, and the CPU actually put it in the back of the net, which was quite hilarious. The AI actually scored an own goal, which was quite good, because I mean, I got a goal. And is the intro again. Um, the intro has been slightly tweaked from the arcade version as well. They said they've slightly, this has got, you can zoom this out much further than the arcade version, although the sprites look a little bit de -rezzed. Oh, just going to show you a mode from arcade before I finish this video. Arcade mode again, fairly standard. Again, pick your team. I mean, you've got a good selection of teams from a lot of countries from. I suspect probably from one of the previous World Cups, perhaps the 94 one. Maybe they're just stuck in. So you've got an awful lot of Western, American, Japanese. You've got all the most, all the big names there. Argentina, Brazil, England. You've even got Scotland and Wales. First game. Oh, I can slightly rib some of my Scottish friends because it's been a long time since they managed to actually get into the World Cup, unfortunately. Throw in. Well, I think for the ne one of the next tournaments they're talking about expanding it further, so... So there will be a chance for teams that, do that perhaps struggle to get in normally to... Um, actually get in. So there are a few goals you have to be aware of with the AI that can be very tricky to defend against. Yeah, so I'm playing as Belgium. Belgium who we lost to in previous World Cup in the runner-up game. We also lost them in the group stage as well in what was best described as a friendly group game because both sides were two. But we actually played Belgium twice in the last World Cup and we lost in the, the second round follow-up. We ended up being the fourth team England did as I recall. Well, Harry Kane did get the golden boot, which was good to see. 
So you see they're more fly kicks. There, there really is an awful lot of fouling. You can get away with an awful lot of fouling in this game. But it is really good fun. It is fast. There are a few minor differences with the arcade game, but generally as a whole, this is actually the better package. You can zoom out further. As I said, it would have been nice if you had a radar because that would have really helped with the actual uh, allocating where the players are. So you've basically got your short passes, your long passes. You've got quite a few camera controls. You can actually change the field, although I don't show it in any of the videos, you can change the field plane as well, where you move it more so it's flat, but it's actually better diagonally because if you're flat, it's harder to judge distance between the foreground and the background of the picture is a bit of an odd one. There isn't a top view though. But overall, I think this is actually a really solid football game. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's rare for me to say that because I'm not a huge, as I said, not a huge football fan. And for me personally, you know what? I actually enjoyed this far, far more than I did Worldwide Soccer. And I've only recently played this. This is the first time to, we, we, we picked this up this year. So we've only relatively recently played the Saturn's version of Hattrick Hero. But yeah, it's been one of those games that's really impressed me from the get-go. We, all of us in the office have been playing a few two-player matches and been really enjoying it. It's our type of game. If you, if you like games like Super Psychic on the Neo Geo, this is the type of football game you love. Yes, if you want a more serious football game, you're not going to like this. The AI, once you start learning its weaknesses, can be both easy to beat and also frustrating to play against at points. There are times where you basically have to, you're going to concede a goal because of how the AI plays and because of the way it selects the defenders as well when you're trying to defend the ball. There are certain balls that are very hard to defend against. You can also, one of the key factors is press C to run because you're going to need to do that because some, like the max team in the arcade mode, by default have much, much faster players and they will just constantly run into you and steal the ball. And it can be a little infuriating at times because it does feel at points like the AI cheats, so you need to basically cheat back, which isn't always great in a football game. You do want a bit of fairness, even on the harder difficulties, but it's an arcade game. It's from the early 90s, or mid-ish 90s. And side game, it's, it's a great port. It's a shame, it would have been nice if this had been released in Europe at the time with on a budget price. I know they were in Europe at the time, and even in America, we had that whole 3D fad where everyone was going 3D mad. And I have to admit, this game has aged and looks far better now than many of its 3D contemporaries. But at the time, everyone was going for, oh no, it's not in 3D, so it's rubbish, which was a bit unfair. And as I mentioned earlier, this doesn't have a save feature. So this is not the mo the, not going to be a game that can give you weeks and weeks of last ability. But... As this match finishes, I'm going to wrap up shortly. I think this is a really solid football game if you like this type of arcade game. But we've really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend it if you like this type of thing. It's well worth picking up. It's not that expensive either. You can pick it up between 10 to about £20 here in the UK. So it's not that expensive. I imagine it's about $15 to $30. If you like this type of arcade style game, you will definitely like it. It's a really solid game really enjoyable and it's one of the Saturn games that I feel we should have picked up a lot lot earlier we haven't we missed it around originally and I wish we had picked it up early because it's really really enjoyed it but we've got it now and we'll probably do a few more videos I will probably do an arcade playthrough at some point as well on the channel but yes highly recommended from randomized gaming really great fun if you have a multi-tap as well as it allows for up to four players on one console so with that, it's just time for me to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see me actually start doing a bit more now playing on some of the games we actually do footage on, by all means, do leave a comment below. And as always, I'm going to politely ask you to hit that like button. If you enjoyed this content and haven't subscribed, then please do consider subscribing to our channel. And if you want more regular updates of when we release content, etc. or post to the community board, hit that bell button. I have been your host. Random Gamer Riven and thank you for watching this randomized gaming video.